Voters Next Door on HLN's Evening Express, tomorrow, 5 to 7 Eastern. The U.S. ambassador to Libya who died in last night's attack was a career member of the Foreign Service. Chris Stevens was 52 years old. He grew up in Northern California. He was fluent in Arabic and French. Now, his background is fascinating. He was actually in the Peace Corps. He taught English in Morocco in the 1980s before he joined the State Department in 1991. Over the course of his career, he served in Israel, Egypt, Syria, Saudi Arabia, and finally, Libya. Today, his colleagues and friends praised his work and his legacy. He was a role model to all who worked with him and to the young diplomats who aspire to walk in his footsteps. He risked his life to stop a tyrant, then gave his life trying to help build a better Libya. The world needs more Chris Stevenses. The American people have lost a selfless and dedicated servant of our interests and our values. And I have lost a friend. Both of my next guests knew Chris Stevens as well. Elise Labatt, our foreign affairs reporter, and David Tafori, a partner at the Washington law firm Patton Boggs. He specializes in post-conflict countries, including Libya, and has spent a lot of time there. So thanks to both of you uh, for taking the time, and both of you knew him well. David, uh, how passionate was he about Libya? I know that you have been over there several times recently and worked with him personally. Yes, Chris Stevens was one of the finest diplomats the U.S. has to offer. He was also an expert on Libya. He spent time in Libya um, before the war in Libya, and then after the war he was appointed as the representative to the opposition, which was a great distinction. And he worked very hard and tireless, tirelessly in that um, role, both coordinating the response to the humanitarian crises and serving as a liaison to the opposition figures. He was a critical person um, for the administration in working through the problems in Libya. It's a huge loss, and it's, a, it's a, not only a loss in terms of a great diplomat, but someone who is in, really important to both the past in Libya and the future in Libya. Elise, what can you tell us about the man? You knew him for, for a decade. What was he like personally, he, his family, the, the choices he made to go overseas? Well, he was, uh, Aaron, he's what you call at the State Department, a classic Arabist, really loved the Middle Eastern region, and as we saw from his bio, just kept traveling around the region trying to understand it more. But as David said, really loved Libya in particular, and was really interested in helping this country build anew. But, you know, as one colleague put it today, um, he was just a very laid-back guy. He had this incredibly cool kind of Northern California um, exterior, but inside had this kind of burning desire to get it right. And it's not that he wasn't a serious diplomat. Um, he was very serious about the work that he did, but he was very passionate. And he wasn't a pinstripe diplomat. This was not a guy who kind of stood in his office and went to meetings just with government officials. He was someone that would put on his khakis and a, and a button-down shirt and roll up his sleeves and really get in the trenches, as David said, working with the rebels on the ground. He was, you know, a funny guy, a nice guy, always had a smile for everybody. And really seen as the cream of the crop at the State Department, really popular, popular guy among the Foreign Service. David, I guess the, qu the question is, is this something that, you know, given the way that he, the, the, the passion that he felt for his job and that life that he has chosen, that he would, he would, you know, he would be all right to die in the service of his country as a diplomat? Well, he certainly put his life on the line during the war by going to Libya, serving in Benghazi. He was a very courageous man. He was also cool, calm, and collected under pressure. Um, it's ironic that um, he died now in Benghazi, the place where he served during the war, where people really loved him because he helped save so many people. Um, yeah, you know, other than that, I can't answer that question, but he was truly a great public servant. All right. Well, thanks very much to both of you. We appreciate it.